All right, y'all, welcome to another episode of Insight Discussions. I'm here with my hosts, Clayton Williams and Caleb Anderson. We're going to be going over some early MVP predictions, some playoff predictions as well, knowing that a lot of the different teams from last year are not doing very well. So we're going to do some playoff predictions and talk about some of the turmoil going with some of the stars and the star teams in the league. To start off with, we're going to go off with our early MVP favorites. And I know for myself, I have a couple surprise picks and a couple safe picks. I want to start off with Caleb first to see what he has to say. Um, Caleb, who are your top three MVP votes right now? All right. So my top three MVP votes, I got uh, Steph Curry, Steph Curry, and Steph Curry. <laughs> this, this, this is okay. Steph, Steph Curry's MVP to lose this year, man. That boy, I know it's early, but the dude is balling. You know, his teammates have gotten a little better through the two rebuilding years with Clay being out. So I feel like when Clay gets back into the equation, they're really going to be a buzzsaw, and he looks as good as he ever looked, man. So I don't see nobody taking it from him. I don't think they're going to have a high enough seed or great enough numbers to be able to eclipse him getting it. I guess Giannis will always be in the conversation, but uh, I'm going with Steph Curry this time. I do agree that Steph is Steph is my number one pick. I'm not going to give him all three spots unanimously already. But I do think that Steph has the hold on it just because of the team that he has around him. Um, 25 in the first quarter on 100% shooting from the field does help your case a lot. You going scoreless in the fourth quarter. Uh, who did they play? It wasn't the Clippers. Do you remember who they played in that game earlier this week? Um, that they lost? Wasn't that Memphis? Memphis, yeah. excuse me. To, to the, my, my number two MVP voting with to be Job Moran. Going scoreless in the fourth quarter doesn't help Steph. But... I do think that he's going to have one of those seasons that he did his first two MVP years. When With Clay coming back, I definitely can see this team proving a lot of the doubters wrong. People saying that the Warriors aren't, aren't going to make the playoffs. People saying that they're washed up. And people saying that Clay isn't on the top 75 list. I think that the three of them coming back and their role players are playing very well. I'm still not a big fan of Andrew Wiggins, but I can't deny that he's playing very well in his role. And James Wiseman is still young and still developing. I, I like what they're doing, like you said, in the past two years of really bringing those young players to forward to be able to help. And and you don't. My question for you is: you still don't have anybody coming close at all. No, nobody else besides Steph. Not that I can see, man. I was just kind of looking. Um, the Lakers they have three superstars, so they're disqualified from getting an MVP. Um, the Nets. Um, is KD and Harden. I think that kind of cancels out for them. Um, the only other guy I can see getting close is Milwaukee uh, with uh, Giannis. But, and then John Morant, I like him. He's definitely eating and he's going to be an all-star this year. But I don't think they're going to have a high enough seed um, to be able to warn him getting the MVP. Unless he, and if you have a low seed, you got to do something crazy, like have a triple-double or something that's never been done. I don't think he's going to do that, so. I got Steph running away as of right now. So when you say high enough seed, so where are we talking? Right? Like, you, he not needs top, to be not top four. So he has to get a top four seed for him to be considered an MVP, unless he does something crazy. Because his team didn't make the playoffs last year. They did. Okay, so they made the eighth seed last year. So they have mm -hmm. to make. They have to jump to the top four and to be in the, in the category. Yeah, if they got like top four. Maybe I might even give them five because I don't think they could get five. But if he get up there. Do you have to make in the playoffs I, this year? I give him a nod. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm glad that you at least gave him that. Clayton, who are your top three candidates right now for MVP? Uh, so in no particular order, I do have Steph Curry in my top three. I have Jaw Morant right now in my top three. And then my third guy, I'm going to go with Luka Doncic. Uh, I think he's been the favorite in, when it comes to the Vegas odds the past three years. Uh, this year he was tied at one with Giannis. Uh, what is it? Plus five, uh, five fifty. So if you want to go put a hundred dollar bet down, you can win five hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, I think this is going to just go on the theme of the NBA wants to become a big national, uh, international brand. Uh, try to catch up with the NFL in popularity. And over these last couple of years, we see that influx of international superstars from the Giannis's. Uh, Joker last year won MVP. And so maybe this year we'll have that little trifecta of a uh, actually four times 
uh, an international player winning the MVP with Giannis winning two in a row uh, a couple years ago and then Joker last year. So uh, those are my top three. Uh, ja Morant's probably been the most impressive thus far uh, in the season. He's averaging like 28 points per game, five rebounds, eight assists. He's shooting over 50% from the field, 39% from three. Everything I just said is career highs for him. So he's on that perfect tra uh, tra trajectory to become a superstar in this league. So um, we're off to a fun start in the NBA. Yeah, I have to give it to Jar. I think I I'm seeing him go like very fringe of third all NBA team, the way that he's playing right now, he can keep it up. Um, I think that he's definitely going to be in the running. If he, I, I, I can give it to Caleb. If he can get his team to the top five seed, I can definitely give that to him for MVP. I think that his biggest challenge will be Steph. To contradict your point on Luka, I don't think that Luka's going to have a chance to get it this year with Steph playing the way that he is. And I don't believe that Dallas is going to play that well this year. I still see a big problem between Chris Stapps and Luka. I don't think it's going to work. Personally, I think he is just soft. Not Luka, I'm talking about Chris Stapps. I think that Chris Stapps is just soft. I don't see him improving enough to be that second star. He may need to do that somewhere else. And maybe, maybe what I'm perceiving as him being soft is that as far as I just don't want to be here like that. So I'm going to just go out on the court and just do whatever. So I'm hoping that they can shape that up in some way, shape, or form just to get him a better role partner. And then if they do better, then I can see him possibly getting more MVP voting. But I can see the Mavericks easily sliding to the 6th, 7th, or 8th seed this year. I just don't have that high of aspirations for them myself. That boy John Morant, I watch every dribble of the Lakers-Memphis game where he, I think he had 40. And the only bad part of that night is that he missed that third free throw, which that kind of comes with the bumps and bruises of getting to where you want to be. But one thing I noticed about him that's going to help him take the next leap is that jump shot or the three pointer specifically is looking very smooth. So uh, he about to be a problem, man. I think when people go do those redrafts um, on his class, he might surpass Zion if he don't get that weight down and stop being injured all the time. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and also to add on to what you were just saying about that Lakers game, uh, this is the second time uh, in a, like a real high impact game like that, where Ja has actually been the best player on the court amongst other great players. He was better than Russ that night. He was better than LeBron that like that night. He was better than AD that night. And then when we go back to that uh, playing game last year, he was better than Steph for that one game where you have to win. He was better than Steph. So Ja's on that right. Uh, He's on that right path right now in, in in terms of getting better with his game. I definitely agree. So if we were to take an average amongst all of the panel and here on Inside Discussions, I'm guessing that we can all go with Steph as being our safe bet with a couple players such as Ja and Luca coming in behind, challenging him for that. I'm going to count out Giannis too. I, I know he already has two MVPs and it's a very narrative driven award, but especially with Holiday being out, if he's still able to dominate for the time being, I think he'll be in that discussion as well. The Bucks getting the number one seed will drive that narrative really heavily with the inconsistency of his two other star players who are star players in their own right, but the inconsistency is what holds them back for me. And the Nets coming back healthier um, and the other Eastern Conference teams all improving as well. The Bucks secured a number one seed. I think that Giannis will definitely be in that top three. Um, so now to move on to a very sour note, um, <clears throat> I'm going to hand it over to Clayton first. We're going to discuss some of the turmoil going over in Philadelphia. 